New Zealand in 1909 was a vastly different place than it is today. For starters, the population for the entire country was just 750,000 people. Cars were rare and the preserve of the rich. Richard Pearce had flown his primitive plane a few hundred metres only six years prior. Planes in the skies of New Zealand only really occurred as a result of World War I, Harry Wigram beginning flying aircraft and training pilots. So when New Zealanders began seeing strange, large, cylindrical floating objects in the sky, the only term in their vocabulary to articulate what they had seen was airship. The public was fully aware of the development of dirigibles like the Zeppelin. Only there weren't any capable at that stage of operating long distance flights and there certainly weren't any in New Zealand. Nor was there a major concept of an unidentified flying object being from another planet. H.G. Wells's book was doubtless on a few shelves and a letter to the ODT at the time of the sightings did allude to them being Martian nuclear powered spaceships. The concept of these mystery airships being anything other than the product of another human being doesn't seem to have entered the minds of many of the witnesses. Their accounts employ terrestrial descriptions. The reports all came within a small two and a bit week window, centred largely around Southland and Otago. The witnesses range from farmers, school children, labourers and even a Presbyterian minister. Fair to say a cross section of society. There were also a large number of daylight sightings which would preclude lights from Venus and that sort of thing. As I've already mentioned, cars were a few, meaning their lights probably weren't an explanation either. The sightings also took place in locations well away from railway lines. The opportunity for them to be confused with the reflection of train lights is another explanation we can also take off the table. 1909 wasn't another Kaikoura sighting. By and large the witnesses were talking about an object with a floodlight. As a skeptic I find this case intriguing for all those factors. I'm not however totally discounting the possibility that this was some kind of mass delusion similar to the Virgin Mary appearing to the masses at Fatima in Portugal. Only these people weren't believers. They reported what they saw and went back to their lives. Teachers and preachers. Giving it little to no thought a month later down the track. And what about similar overseas appearances in the skies of other phantom airships, like England and the United States? The first wave of English sightings, four years after those in New Zealand, can largely be put down to the threat Zeppelins posed to the country. History will prove those concerns were well founded as bombs from the Zeppelins rained down on metropolitan centres in World War I. The ones in San Francisco in 1896. There are a few YouTubes that confine themselves to these Northern Californian phantom airship sightings and probable explanations. I do think, however, some of the New Zealand reports, all those from the North Island included, were the result of suggestion of there being a mysterious object in the sky. Imaginations were already set ablaze with articles in the papers of the day. 
I'm therefore sticking to the South Island Mystery Airship sightings being the most credible. Believe you me, I am covering but a cross section so you get the gist and the scope. I'm also presuming a lot of people didn't report a sighting in order not to be labelled crazy. The first reports of an airship moving in the sky appear in and around Belclutha. Two machines are spotted. Time to read the report of what occurred. The best known published report is probably this one, as it later included sketches of a craft, which you'll get to see. The first sightings that day were from a terrified sounding Mrs. Russell, who observed what she described as a black boat shape, travelling in stop-start movements approximately 600 metres from where she was standing. Her rendition of what she saw will feature later along with the school children from the school at Kelso, 23 of which all claim to have seen a ship bobbing over the school around midday. Airships were almost a daily occurrence for five days starting on the 26th of July. Close to Belclutha, there was a mid-morning report from two people of a boat-shaped object two miles away that dipped from the sky, suddenly swerved and made its way towards the sea. The craft featured a pole of some kind sticking out of the top. OK, before we move on, let's now see these first reports on a map. Now to the second wave for want of a term. And Mr McNeil was awoken at two in the morning by a loud noise and observed a searchlight coming down from a black body of an airship. Later that day, in the early evening, eleven people, including Reverend Thomas Pullen, saw what he described as an airship as bright as a bright star. Others detailed the airborne object as having a black body with a light at the front. In the suburb of Wakari, the school headmaster and children offered a similar late afternoon narrative. It was now Timaru, Geraldine and Tamuka's turn to report nighttime sightings. These largely seemed to describe the airship as being cigar shaped with two searchlights sweeping the sky. Included amongst the witnesses was the local cop in Tamuka. The reports are coming thick and fast. Just keep in mind someone may have observed the craft one day and it might not have appeared in the local newspaper until days afterwards. There was also this intriguing report as well from two dredge hands. They report seeing two figures on board the craft. That evening, hundreds of Christchurch citizens witnessed lights over the Port Hills and Littleton.
On the 31st, we are now back near Tapanui, Greenvale, where there were a heap of sightings, best summed up in this clipping, outlining a daytime report on a farm and another at night by two ladies after a dance, who also described some sort of lighting display, which you can read. Finally, a closing night gig in the south before the intermittent reports from up north began, starting in the Melbourne Sounds. Now, the second map of the final South Island reports. And let's now look at the sketches the Otago Daily Times reporter solicited off the Kelso schoolchildren and Mrs. Russell on the 23rd. Mrs. Russell, the adult, is the one circled. Not that you pick it, frankly. What were the explanations offered at the time? They were numerous, and I'm paraphrasing here for brevity. Fire balloons. Carrier pigeons. Lunamous clouds. Cosmic dust. Marsh gas. Black swans, Venus, Maverick Backyard Inventor, smugglers had stolen the thunder with a new technology perhaps, hopefully that cartoon from the time was just chunning in cheek. <laughs> Why no? What we would consider to be nowadays a UFO? Well, yes, there were some that thought these were aliens. Belkufa surveyor Robert Gregor certainly thought so. He suggested a visitation from another world advanced in intellect and knowledge. Aliens were, though, on the same level as fire balloons. All these interpretations were miles behind the number one reason given for their appearance in 1909. Germans. Germans. Who else? Doing what Germans have the proclivity to do a mere 20,000 kilometres from the closest airport to New Zealand. At 75 kilometres an hour, Zeppelin would make it here in no time at all. Now, what to make of all of this? When I first began researching this, I was instinctively drawn to an overblown contemporary report from Zimbabwe I heard on a podcast. Going on sheer memory here, it was where school kids claimed to have met and spoken telepathically to aliens that landed in their schoolyard. That was some sort of mass delusion. The airship invasion, in inverted commas, of 1909 appears to be a different kettle of fish. People who encountered the objects were more inquisitive as to their origins than running to the hills. They didn't go out and write a book. It was, yes I'm going to say it, reasonable to actually rule out true airships. I can't personally discount the testimony of so many people. 
The reports from 1909 show a consistency to the point I'm compelled to say they did see something. Something that will likely never be fully explained. Mystery Airships is a fitting title, therefore. True unidentified flying objects. And what do you think happened? And put it in the comments. I'd appreciate it if you could give this a like and a share. And I will spot you next time. Bye for now.